Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I'm doing a little bit of housekeeping here, but I'm ready to start um, covering our, our album. So I've chosen this pattern, which is a simple pattern, I just realized I haven't uh, inked it yet, that I'm going to use as the base, and then I'm going to wrap my spine with a stripe. So I'm going to um, double check my measurements and ink this real quick. It looks like I might need to take a little bit off. I'm going to measure it against this. And they are the same. So, whoops. Now I'm going to put it in my trimmer and see where I'm at. Okay. It is. It's right. It just looks uh, a little bit too big. So I'm going to ink it. And then we're going to go ahead and glue down this piece. And then the... Um, I hate it when I do that. I'll have to cover that up with something or draw your attention away from it. Um, I'm going to use tape on the spine piece because it's going to be interactive. It's going to move. Um, I use tape. If it's static, just like a flat panel, I use glue. You know what? I'm going to check and see if I have any more of that. And I don't. If I had another piece of this, I think I'd, I'd actually trim it out and change it. But I don't, so I'm going to have to figure out how to mask some of the um, the ink there. <clears throat> now, I have this old Apple Watch box that I'm going to put inside just to help it keep from closing all the way down on itself. Hey Nala, come here. It is Tuesday and it's trash day, so lots of things for her to bark about. don't want to keep setting it up right. There we go. So I want to share with you, this is the um, cardstock that I'm using for the base. It's Astro Brights. I get it at... Um, Walmart, but we've had some requests to carry it in the shop because not everybody is finding it. The color is cream and we do have a limited supply in the shop if you guys want to build it with the same color. And then I used white book binding tape around it, which I don't think we have in the shop. I had it in my stash. I don't do very many cream or white albums, so I don't use it that often. Okay, so now I would like for there to be a slight gap I think around the front so let me see I'm going to lay out some of my design for the front so I can decide if this is long enough. And if it's not, I do have another piece. So I'm planning on using these large stamps, which came from the 12 by 12 collection pack signature page. This is an ephemera card. And then I'm planning to add some fussy cut flowers. And I might even add some dimensional flowers. I'm not sure yet. And this will tuck behind and I think I think that's okay so I'm okay with where it is landing um, where the spine is landing so I'm gonna go with that so I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna add a bunch of tape and when we get back we'll apply it to the book okay I uh, took a break and got all my tape on here so I'm ready to lay it out 
So I'm going to start um, by first placing this edge and then coming around and wrapping it. So I'm just going to take off one uh, strip of tape until I'm comfortable with the location. And then I will start taking off the rest of the tape and wrapping it. So I'm going to tack it into place right here. It's a little too high. And then I'm going to wrap it around before I remove any more tape. Oops, it shifted on me. Shoot. Okay. Now I'm going to wrap it around and see what I'm looking for is to make sure when I come around, I'm going to have even borders and it looks good. So I am going to start removing tape. I'm going to burnish this one into place because it's going to hold us true and straight to the edges of the book. Now I'm going to use my pick tool to reach in and take out the rest of the tape and slowly but surely uh, remove all of the tape and then we will have our spine done. Oops, that's not my pick tool. <laughs> that's a different tool. This isn't difficult, but it is a little bit tedious. But it, you do get the best result if you go through and make sure you get it on straight from the get-go. And then as you go across, you can improve. Now, when we, when we start to get to the um, score lines on the book, we want to open it at about a 35 degree angle. If this is 45 and this is 90, somewhere in the middle there. Um, and then we want to lay this down while it's in this semi-open position. Um, and that should help keep the spine from cracking. If it's all the way closed, when you open it, it'll buckle. And if it's all the way open and you go to close, it's going to stretch and possibly tear your paper. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. So far, so good. Okay. And we're going to keep it in that position as we continue to remove the tape. Easier said than done. <laughs> to stand up to get the next row of tape off. So now we're getting close to the center of the spine. So I'm going to take off a couple strips. Two, three. And then the next one I remove actually four. The next one after this one is actually going to come across the corner. So I'm coming right up to the edge, but not going over the corner. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of the tape, and we should finish this up. So, I didn't mention it, but the stripe is from the 12 by 12 collection. And so is um, the word pattern from the 12 by 12 collection pattern. Every, generally speaking, what I use on the cover and on the inside liners is from the 12 by 12 because my cover is 8.5 by 8.5. So an 8x8 uh, collection pack piece will leave too big of a border. So that's, that's my general rule of thumb. And oftentimes what I will do early on is set aside the 12x12s that I want to use so I don't accidentally cut into them. Okay, that's in. We're going to burnish everything into place.
and this is six inches by eight and three eighths, six by eight and three eighths. Um, and that works out to be um, the right size for the to, for, to wrap the spine. Ooh, I'm having trouble with my words today. Okay, and as you can see, it doesn't really want to close, so you need to work it into place, but be gentle with it. Um, don't force anything, let it work its way through. Part of the reason why we use strips of tape instead of a solid piece of tape is because the strips will allow the paper to shift and stretch ever so slightly. If we had used a solid piece, it would not stretch. Um, and paper can stretch um, and work in, into its you know final form. So there we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is focus on the back. So on the back, I was planning on using the strip that came from the 12 by 12. So I cut this down. This is the balance of it. I'm going to use this and then I'm going to put another strip of stripes. And that's the plan. So we'll get this one down and then I can measure what I need. And so this is, this is five inches across. That means this should be seven inches, but I'll verify it. Yep, seven inches. So I took a 12 by 12, cut it at seven, had five inches left over. We're gonna pull that pattern back into the back. Um, and it just creates uh, unity, I think. Okay, sorry, I was not locating my ink. I'll try not to smear it <laughs> like I did on the cover. Okay, once I get this down, I'm gonna take a quick break and measure out this piece that's gonna go over here. Lay it in visually, make sure I'm happy with the way it looks, and if I am, I'll come back and we'll glue it down together. And then, um, then we'll focus on getting the inside liners done and installing the pages. One of the challenges of working with cream and white is, and glue is uh, keeping your work surfaces clean. Yeah. I just want to check, check, and recheck to make sure I'm putting it in the right side. Up. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna trim this out, verify that I wanna pull the stripe in. The other uh, option that I'm thinking about is a solid blue over here, but I wanna check it out and then I'll get right back. Hey everyone, I'm back. So I trimmed out um, a piece that's gonna fit right here, nice and neat. So that's one look. And then I went ahead and trimmed out um, another solid blue. And you know what? I think I like this better. So that's what we're gonna go with. So this is just, um, Trim to fit, but what I can tell you is um, this is just slightly, maybe a 32nd of an inch over one and a half inches. Um, and that's just how it turned out. But honestly, I would recommend that you measure what you have because you can't count on where exactly um, your wrap is going to end. So always trim it to fit. But that'll give you um, at least a rough estimate. So you're looking for a strip that is um, at, at least maybe one and five eighths uh, wide, and you still might have to trim a sliver off, and about eight and a half inches tall. And so you'll trim it to fit after you after you locate something that size. Okay. All right. Okay. 
And you know what? It's not narrow enough, so I'm going to take another sliver off because I want there to be a, a cream border all the way around it. So, so there you go. Even though I thought I was being very precise, I still need to take a little off and we'll ink it and, and try that one more time. And it turns out that it is right at one and a half inches. So I'm happy with that. Okay, lovely, lovely. Now I'm gonna add um, a little bit of something, something here. I don't know what, it's gonna be stickers or chipboard or both. And I'll show you what I come up with in a few minutes. And also while I'm away, I'm gonna go ahead and line up uh, what we're gonna be doing on the inside, okay? Be back shortly. Okay, everyone, I'm back and I've chosen these two. So this is from um, the 12 by 12 collection pack. And um, I, it's from the signature page. So I'm, I was st stalling to try to remember where it came from. So this is the signature page and there's two. So I've got one for each side. Uh, originally I trimmed this one out thinking I was going to do my cover in this and then I've shifted gears so I'm going to preserve that and use it here and I think I've trimmed I think it's ready yeah I'm just testing to make sure it's not going to get stuck in the hinge it's very close Okay, so I'm tipping it forward. What I'm looking for is I want to know if this edge is going to bevel. Um, and if that's the case, then I want to trim some more off because it'll you'll just be fighting your glue constantly. Um, and I'll show you what it would look like if it was in the if it was too long. I'm going to scoot it down and see how it's beveling right there. That's what I'm looking for to make sure that that's not going to happen. And just to be sure, I'm going to take a little bit more off and ink the edge and lay it down. this nice and simple um what i imagine here on the front and back is um is, uh, um, i'll give you an example if i, if I can find a piece here. Uh, is matting and adding um photos that's a four by six directly onto this. So I would mat this in cream and then add this and that would be a four by six photo. And then maybe you could do a four by six photo on this side, different orientation. And that still gives you some room around it to add some embellishment. Um, so that's kind of what I'm visualizing. And I may actually add those mats um, before the walkthrough, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Just to give you an idea and um, adding the mats is really, something that I recommend you wait as long as possible on um, because you can't move them. So a lot of times I want to know exactly what my photo is before I know what my mat's going to look like or even where I want to locate it. 
So what's an example of that? So if I'm if it's a scenery, it's one thing, that's not so hard. But if it's people and they're facing one direction or the other, that may change how I want to lay the page page out. So my next project, um, which I believe I'm still doing, but I got to check with Julie on it, is a pre-made folio album from Graphic 45. It's one of the staples that finally came in, um, and I'm going to use a Graphic 45, uh, a DCE, which is a, a summarized re-release of um, one of their other collections, and I'm going to do it to look kind of, uh, organize it like a for recipes so it's not farmhouse but it's country something anyway <laughs> I can't remember off the top of my head but it's um, one of the latest DCEs so assuming we have that in stock I'm going to use that and then the graphic 45 folio and I'll go over that more in detail in in the next video so okay so that's it so the last thing we have to do is add our pages so the first thing I do is I lay them down, I verify they're in the order that I want, and I added this since we were last together. It's just a matted, I think it's four by three, um, and a piece of chipboard. It just looked too plain here, and I, I like the way that goes together now. And then I added this um, additional insert. So you've got the large insert and then the smaller tag insert. And that's true here. I think, uh, I can't remember if I added this before or after. Anyways, they're in order. So I'm going to set them over here and then just pull them in one at a time and get them installed. Now, it's nothing new. I've done it in many videos, but we do occasionally get some new viewers. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the process. Um, but I'm going to take a quick break and do a little housekeeping before I do. Okay, I'm ready. I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be. So I will only use my pick tool. So my preferred method is to slip the pocket page over the hinge and then use my pick tool to reach in and grab the tape. Other people take the tape off and add uh, glue so that they can put it down. My hesitation with using glue here, one is I, I think if you're gonna use glue, you need glue on tape. The tape holds up longer and is uh, does better under um, huge, uh, temperature shifts. Um, glue will at some point eventually dry out. So I use the tape and I, I prefer that. The other reason I like the tape is if I put a page on and I, let's say I put it in out of order and I have done that, I can use my undo and lift the whole pocket page back off, wait for the hinge to dry, put more tape on it and start over. You cannot do that with glue. You will have to live with where it's located because you can't pull it off without damaging your um completely damaging your hinge and or even worse your pocket page so the only thing you can do if you're really unhappy with the order of your album is you could cut it off at the bottom of the hinge and then reapply it to a book on this side, but then you wouldn't have the open pocket for the insert, which is okay, but you would lose that. You'd have to put it in a different way. Okay, so I like to open and close it. And I'm looking for an even straight border. Um, even if it's not even, I want it to be straight. And this is going to be a challenge, and I can tell you why. This is a really thick page. <clears throat> because you've got this folded over on itself, plus this pocket. So it's a very thick page. So it's hard to get it to lay down straight. So I took out the inserts for now until I get it located. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and add them back in. I used 3 8 inch tape. And looking at this now, I think I might have used a narrower tape. Because I might have some tape that winds up showing. 
through. Not where I want it to be. My hinge is getting in my way. So the other reason I like to install it this way is you can see there's the bottom of the hinge and here's the page. So it's not going all the way down to the bottom and it's deliberately not going down to the bottom because this page is so thick. It needs that room to maneuver. This will be the hardest page to install. Okay, the rest will go much easier because they're not as thick. Okay, page three and four. right on oh no it didn't <laughs> I was sticking it between the flap and not into the actual pocket which I've done that before as well so look at it on both sides make sure it's actually going over the hinge yeah it did that time added these since we built the page too, but I'll go over that in detail in the walkthrough. Here's our last pocket page. Good night. Can't seem to get a hold of it. There it is. Okay, now I shifted that around so much I'm going to make sure I'm where I need to be. Press that into place. Then we'll add our insert and our tag. And then we got to take out the last strip on this side. Or, nope, this side. <laughs> I turned one too many pages. Okay, 
here we go. So here's all our pages. I need to do a little bit of cleanup. Try not to use my fingers on here because I've been dragging them all over the place. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, page eight. I'm going to add some additional embe embellishments uh, to the inside, but I'm not going to do that uh, online. I'm going to do it offline, and I'll just go over it in detail when um, I do the walkthrough. But we do need to decorate the cover, and we'll do that together. And I need to do some housekeeping, and I also need to do some matting, which you guys don't need to sit through. So I'm going to do that when I get back. I should have most everything uh, mapped out, and we should be able to get through that pretty quickly. So I'll be back shortly. <laughs> 